Hello everyone, this is Venom Geek Media. Uh, today's video is really to mark the 80th anniversary of an event that I'm sure all of you know very well, and a, a day that will forever live in infamy. I won't pretend to tell you your own history, you will almost certainly know it better than I will, uh, and if you don't know it, then uh, ask in the comments because there are people down there who know a lot about this stuff. Uh, there's a lot of history buffs among us. I wanted to talk about this, the attack on Pearl Harbor, and the fact that it is the 80th anniversary. There's obviously the tactical significance. Uh, the Japanese knew that they had to score uh, an early victory against the Americans, and hopefully that would keep them in the running, uh, out the running for a while and give Japan the time it needed. But the attack went about as well as it possibly could have. And as far as they were concerned, when they were performing the attack, it was legal. Uh, they believed that the declaration of war had been issued on time, and of course it hadn't, but how were they meant to know that? Um, wonders of communication back then. So there is that element that is remarkable from a, a naval history standpoint, from a tactical standpoint, uh, is the success of this very bold uh, opera and ambitious operation and that the Japanese managed to pull it off, and it probably did make a difference, but perhaps it wasn't enough. The other half of the kind of tactical and strategic aspects of this event are of the US salvage and repair operations, which were unbelievable. Um, it looked really like a whole lot of the American fleet was knocked out within six, and yet within six months, Five battleships and two cruisers were patched or refloated. The Americans did an astounding job of bouncing back after what was believed to be a crippling attack and remaining in the fight. And that is equally as impressive, though perhaps not as glamorous, as what the Japanese managed to do. So there's that as a historical event and uh, an, an event in naval maritime warfare. Uh, maritime aviation. But there's another aspect I want to think about, and that is the idea of consequences, or possibly knowing what the consequences or outcomes of your actions will be. Like I say, the Japanese thought that they had delivered their declaration of war on time. They hadn't, and that paints this whole event in a very different light uh, uh, compared to before, where it was just a surprise attack. Now it was a it was a dishonorable um, sneak attack, at least by the American perspective. And I think that definitely had an influence on the American psyche. And that's the thing. A lot of people, or many people, are keen to say that the ends justify the means. Now, there's a problem with that, beyond the obvious. The problem is that you can't possibly know, in your small, limited human capacity, what the ends of your actions are. I mean, they really, they really echo uh, across time, and you can't possibly know what the outcome of your actions will be. Admiral Yamamoto had some idea of what might be the consequences, not really, and certainly not in any long-term understanding. And obviously it was partially out of his hands. They were going to have a war with America regardless, and he had little say in that. None of them could have possibly known what the consequences of this event would be. Not just on what the Americans would do to Japan. And I'm not just talking about uh, the bombs. I'm also talking about post-war and the interaction between those two cultures, and that's influenced both considerably. Um, we have the Americans to thank for anime, surprisingly enough. Uh, it was because of American comics that the GIs brought in the occupation in the 1950s that then spawned anime. So thanks a lot, America. You've doomed us all to anime. In seriousness, there's been a huge, obviously, a huge influence that the two cultures have had. And there's also been an influence on the psyche, particularly on the American psyche, and that wouldn't happen again until 
20 years ago and a few months ago. Um, and obviously that had a big impact on the American psyche too. Again, I won't pretend to tell you your own history. You know it well enough and you were there. I, I wasn't. And that is that, yeah, you can't possibly know what the consequences of your actions will be. The person who carried out, the people that carried out their attacks had some short-term ideas of what might happen. And to some extent, they were borne out. But things can go very pear-shaped the further along you go. And the further away from your event, from your actions, things get, the more strange and unpredictable its repercussions are. And I want to really just joined this up finally with Star Trek, with the Dominion War, with the Romulans joining the war, and obviously there's a very strong um, kind of connection with the, the Americans joining the war. S obviously, Cisco lied to bring them into the war, and he says he can live with it. You know, the ends justify the means, but he hasn't seen the ends fully. Not, not yet. He doesn't know what's going to happen. If he's accepting that the ends justify the means... Uh, that he is responsible for the consequences of his actions, because that is how he is judging the morality of what he does, not by the inherent morality of his actions, but by the outcome of those actions, and he hopes that they have a good outcome, even if they're bad actions, then he's got to be prepared for all the consequences, then, surely, that emerge as a result of that. Everything the Romulans do in the war, everything that happens to the Romulans, that then all comes down on onto Cisco's shoulders. That's all his responsibility. I don't know if he could really take that burden, um, because then he'd be responsible for a lot of things, a lot of terrible things. We can't know the consequences of our actions, not completely, or not with any real idea. So it's very unwise to uh, take action based on what you will believe based on what you believe to be the outcome the only sensible thing to do as yamoto did was take the best action available the best action available to him was the attack on pearl harbor that was his best option in a what he knew to be a bad situation and that's why he did that otherwise he'd be responsible for all sorts of consequences of things that were beyond his control he took the best action possible in the circumstances he undertook a plan that he believed would end the war as quickly as possible or at least he hoped they would and of course they didn't but that were the best chance they had at bringing an end to the war as quickly and as uh, efficiently as possible and unfortunately that didn't pan out and unfortunately um, a lot of people died as a result of it, Americans and Japanese, and should he bear the brunt for all those outcomes? Is he responsible for all the ends of his actions, or should we just take his action in isolation, his orders in isolation, as to what he was specifically trying to achieve just in that particular um in that particular moment. Those are my thoughts on the on Pearl Harbor. Um, as I say, uh, I don't pretend to know American history that well, but I do, I do follow it. For me, what it really boils down to is it's impossible for us to truly know and understand what the significance of what we do is. The best we can do is just, in the individual moments, do the right thing. Thank you guys for listening. I'll see you in the next video.